testing mono behaviors is different from your average unit test. A mono behavior has to be loaded with a game object. It potentially has frames and physics and other effects to deal with. Fortunately, Unity provides the Unity test attribute, which goes over a function that returns an I enumerator, and yield return null, which will execute the start function and progress frames. So let's take a look at this with a couple of test cases designed to keep it simple and also point out some specific constraints for these types of tests. The code I'm working with is freely available on GitHub. A link is in the description. We are testing simple behavior, which only has two booleans set to false, first frame happened and start happened, which are then set to true in the start and update functions. The test case helps validate what points we can interrupt a behavior. So in the test case, the first one is just a normal test case because we only care about initialization here. We want to validate that start and update have not been called by construction, i.e. construct on adding component start and first frame are false. We simply create the game object, add simple behavior, and then test that the values are false. The next function is object on first frame set start and first frame happen to true. We're using the unity test attribute and returning an I enumerator. This is where we can simulate a frame or start happening. In arrange, we create a game object and add the simple behavior. In act, we yield return null. It's important to note that every time you do that, it progresses a frame. The first time, it will call start and process the first frame. Then we assert that the start happened and the first frame. All of these should return true, not exceptions. I should make it clear that assert throws exceptions when the conditions are not met. They are named and formatted for the test runner, but you could simulate the same results by throwing an exception and including similar text. I should also point out that you can add many game objects or load something as a prefab. However, keep in mind that references such as references to a larger systems like a game manager would also need to be simulated. This can cause a lot of expense in setup and is often ignored. It should also be pointed out that game logic seldom depends on frames. The logic is usually completed or at least stepped within a frame. So often you wouldn't check your logic with this and a normal test case would be better. So this is structured more for testing larger things like smoke tests. For instance, a prefab that might undergo regular changes and that you want to make sure it wasn't broken by a designer for some state or executing a portion of a scene and marking out a list of broken features. But things like testing visual state, physics, random, and FX are easier to validate by a human and also pretty easy to determine the source if something goes wrong. So most projects don't make many of this type of test case. In the next video, I plan to cover mock testing, MOQ which allows you to create larger environments in your test case by faking out what the subject sees. This has a lot of value in all forms of test automation and also teaches code complexity.